What's going on YouTube? OCD for EDC here. And what I got for your face balls today, we're going to be talking about this guy right here. Uh, it won't all fit in the frame, so I might be moving the camera around a little bit. Uh, but this is my new to me uh, 3D printer. Well, it was new, <clears throat> but this was my first uh, attempt at 3D printing and I I've had this now for about three weeks, I guess, and um, I've learned quite a bit in that time frame. I've printed quite a few things and messed around with it a bunch, and yeah, so kind of just a you know, self-taught uh, crash course in uh, 3D printing. Uh, right at the moment, I'm printing a, a pot holder uh, for my wife. Uh, and this is actually a wood filament that I'm using and yeah so but I thought I would uh, uh, talk about the printer a little bit uh, what it is and why I got it and those kinds of things I've had a lot of people ask questions about it so I figured I'd make a little video I know this is different from the videos that I normally make uh, but you know I thought well for sure there was some people interested in knowing some info about this thing so Let's get into it. So first off, uh, the printer is a Mingda D2. And I decided to go with this printer for a handful of reasons. Uh, it's a cost-effective printer, and uh, it had some features on it that I thought were fairly important, one of which being uh, a wider uh, base uh, for the Y-axis, and uh, a lot of them use just one rail or they well they'll have two rails that are stacked side by side right down the middle and so having the double rail set up on the bed uh looked a lot more substantial to me and and just like it would uh you know have better uh leverage against the the bed itself uh this particular model has a heated bed uh, it also has a direct drive uh, right up here. So some printers use what they refer to as a Bowden tube where the actual drive rollers that are feeding the filament in uh, are, is hard mounted somewhere on the printer and then you have a like a little uh, uh, PTA or like a, a Teflon tube that goes up and your, your filament goes through there down to what they refer to as the hot end um, where the extrusion is actually happening. Uh, so I, I liked the direct drive setup. Uh, the skull that you see here, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. <clears throat> so I have done some upgrades, if you will, or modifications to this printer, uh, just based off, you know, my own experience. I did a bunch of research and, uh, checked out a bunch of things before I made this purchase. Uh, but one of the other reasons that I really like this printer is it has, if I can show it off here. A dual z-axis motor so you can see one right here and there's another one Oop. it's gonna be kind of hard to show off on the back side there's another one over there on the on the other side so there are two stepper motors uh, with the lead screws uh, which you can kind of see there uh, one on each side <clears throat> and to me that just seems like a more robust setup than doing uh, one, one lead screw and having the, uh, the X axis, you know, where this, uh, gantry runs back and forth, uh, having that just driven off of one side. So, so those are kind of, you know, a few of the reasons why I purchased this particular printer. Now I will say, um, there are like the Creality, uh, Ender 3, uh, this is a fairly comparable printer to that. Uh, if you were looking at uh, getting your own 3D printer, I think that uh, potentially the Creality is kind of more of a, a complete package. With this printer, you're going to kind of be out on your own a little bit as far as how to set it up. And uh, there's just not as much support for it and things like that. So anyway, um, you know, it, that doesn't change my mind as far as, I, you know, if I had to do it over again and buy a, a, a printer, I still think that I would go with this one. I think it's a, a good quality printer. 
it was simple to, to set up. I mean, it took me like 20 minutes to get it all set up and, and actually printing. Uh, and I'm, you know, as brand new to printing as possible. There is, uh, you know, I had zero experience coming into this. I had seen a couple of printers run before, uh, but short of that, um, I had never even touched one. Uh, so, you know, going from this thing showing up at my house in a box to actually printing was, like I said, you know, well, probably about 30 minutes, I suppose. Um, and I did a couple of prints and with pretty good success, uh, I was pretty happy with the way the stuff was turning out just right from the get go. But I went through it, made several adjustments, made some modifications to the printer. Uh, one of the things being this uh, shroud here, as well as this uh, fan duct. That's the part cooling fan. Uh, and I changed the little the little duct there. Both of these were, were uh, prints that I was able to download online. Uh, somebody else designed those components. That's why it has the skull on there. Uh, but the, the main reason that I wanted to change that shroud is because the factory shroud is a metal part. Uh, and you can see it's quite a bit larger. It covers the entire uh, extruder head. And I wanted, uh, basically, I just wanted something to mount uh, this wire in. Uh, and I wanted to have access to the extruder which I can show that off. So you can see right here the filament uh, coming down into the extruder and on the original uh, there was a hole there where this uh, uh, lever sticks out where you release the spring tension uh, to load and unload filament. Um, you can see the part cooling fan there and the fan duct. So <clears throat> Anyway, um, overall, I've been really happy and really pleased with this printer. Uh, the bed that I have on there right now, right at the moment, I'm using a mirror uh, with a little bit of glue stick on it. So it looks like there's smudges all over it. That's what's going on there. Uh, the printer did come with this. This is a uh, flexible uh, magnetic uh, print surface, and that's got glue stick on it as well. So one of the challenges uh, to 3D printing is getting your filament to stick to the bed. So that's one of the reasons that you heat the bed, uh, as well as there's all sorts of different, uh, different ways that you can get your filament to stick down to the bed. Uh, one of them being using glass with the glue stick. Uh, it just really depends on the filament that you're, you're printing with and at what temperatures, um, you know how how it's going to stick uh, so anyway I've uh, printed like I said a whole bunch of things uh, actually before we get into that some of the modifications that I've done of course is on this extruder head uh, the shroud and the fan duct uh, then of course the glass on the the print surface itself but one of the other things that I think was a worthy uh, change was this guy right here is a filament runout sensor. So if the filament were to run out, uh, it would shut the printer down. And that originally was mounted, you can see the two holes right there in the middle of the screen there. That's where that filament runout sensor was mounted originally. And when you were printing something tall, uh, it was just too close to the, the uh, extruder head. And so this particular printer has got a build surface of 230 millimeters by 230 millimeters by 260 millimeters tall. And now that I have changed where that filament runout sensor is located, um, I could actually get 300 millimeters tall out of this printer, uh, just physical dimensions. The uh, gantry will go up high enough for it to make 300 millimeters tall. Um, and then you know, with the filament runout sensor mounted up even higher. So this bracket originally was the spool holder and it had this thimble mounted at the very top for a spool hold holder. And what I have done is I have this mounted on my desk, or it's sitting on my desk in my office right now. 
and I've got some shelving here and my filament is sitting up here on my shelf so uh, this is a filament uh, holder a spool holder that I just printed out online or you know found the design online and I have a hole going through my shelf and the filament comes out and goes straight down into the printer I've printed off multiple different spool holders here's an adjustable one uh, so you can adjust the width of it with the bearings on it uh, here's another one that comes apart it's got uh, threaded rods so you can do different things um, but this setup seems to be working extremely well uh, this spool holder literally the uh, spool just sits right on it and there's bearings in there uh, and yeah so that works out really well it's nice and smooth and does a really good job so that's the setup that I'm working with um, yeah pretty happy with it and the print quality has been really has kind of exceeded my expectations I really didn't know how this was gonna go uh, being brand new to this um, <clears throat> so I'll show you some of the stuff that I've done here and so you guys know I do a lot of knife stuff so I did this little Spyderco logo. It's like a uh, it's a coaster, I think, is what it was advertised as, and you know it turned out really nice. Uh, this was one of the early prints that I did, and then I did my own kind of Maker's Mark logo, uh, and again, you know the accuracy, the dimensions and stuff on this printer. Although I did have to go in and adjust the belt tension all the axis uh points you know for x y and z and really do a lot of fine tune adjusting on it uh but i've got it running very good i mean you can see here if i'll get you up close to this uh this uh vase and you can see there is a little bit of y banding right here on the front uh, and that's honestly just because I've been moving around and, and bumped into it a couple of times while it's been running here uh, Doing other things. So that's really my fault. That's not the printer's fault but <clears throat> Otherwise, like I said, the printer does really excellent uh, I did these uh, Nautilus gears So this is kind of a an interesting little mechanism with these uh, variable ratio gears here uh, definitely uh, kind of a really popular print that a lot of people uh, print when they first get into 3d printing um, and then you know I've done other things in one of the live streams that uh, Molly and I did I printed this little pocket knife uh, design and printed that during the live stream uh, turned out pretty cool it's just you know little little uh, toy thing and then I made this little knife stand uh, it works out really well so you know I've made all kinds of things and I'll show you here so here's a pair of three with a CME if you guys want to check that out go check out my website OCD for uh, but the little knife stand you can just set five knives on there here's a shaman so, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, really, the possibilities are endless uh, with the 3D printer. You can really kind of create anything that you want. Uh, you can create mechanical, uh, you know, moving parts like this little thing right here, which is these three uh, kind of helical or spherical gears uh, that rotate. It's kind of interesting. Um, and then, you know, you can also make functional things and tools like uh, this utility knife here which has got I put uh, magnets in it uh, so it'll hold it open and close so there's a magnet out here another one right here and then one oops, one mounted right there and so yeah pretty cool uh, and then I also uh, made a little tiny one like a keychain utility knife same sort of design uh, this uses this one uses just a standard uh, uh, utility knife blade 
Uh, this one here uses the uh, blades that the style that have the little lines actually you can see the line there where you break off a, a new section uh, so this one's very tiny but uh, same same design same style uh, you know little keychain utility knife pretty cool so you know I've been playing around doing things like that I've also you know, doing these uh, calibration cubes. Uh, these are 20 millimeter cubes. And then with the X, Y, and Z. Uh, so it'll show you any imperfections that you have going on with your printer. Uh, and these are all designs that you can find online uh, for the most part. I mean, some of these, obviously this is mine. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just, you know, basically I'm just learning and practicing and getting the settings correct there are so many settings on these uh, 3d printers it's really really crazy how many settings there are um, it can be a little bit overwhelming uh, but i've learned a lot in a very short amount of time i'm pretty happy with the progress that i've made and really happy with the quality of the prints and stuff uh, they, they've been really great so so that part's fantastic uh, the printer itself, like I said, I had to make a lot of adjustments and tweaks and, you know, making sure tension was just perfect on, on multiple things. But all that's doable. Um, I had, again, you know, I had to move that filament runout switch. Uh, and there was enough wire. You can see the wires running here. Uh, down here, uh, I had to kind of take things apart a little bit to get the wires tucked in really nice. The wire actually runs up inside of the aluminum, uh, the extruded aluminum frame and comes out through a hole uh, right there. And so I was able to get that much uh, slack in the wiring. You know, certainly I could extend the wiring and get it up even higher. Uh, and if I, if I change the programming uh, to where this thing will actually do 300 millimeters to, uh, in height, then I will actually uh, change that a little bit and get that sensor up even further. But where it is right now for the 260 millimeter build height that we have right now, uh, it's fine. So, <clears throat> so yeah. Ultimately, uh, I've been really happy with the printer, and um, really the reason that I got this printer. Uh, some of you might already know this, but. Uh, I have got my own designs and things uh, that I will be releasing uh, several things here coming up in the near future. But uh, this is a fast and easy way to uh, prototype and try out a new design uh, without, you know, uh, taking, you know, a, well, one, working with expensive materials and, uh, you know, just being time consuming, making things out of, you know, titanium and, and different stuff like that. So I can design something, print it out and, and have the part, you know, in actual size, uh, and be able to check it out, uh, make sure it functions the way I want it to and, and all those kind of things. Uh, which leads me to one of the other prints that I did. which is this thing right here. So this is a, a 3D turntable. So you put uh, your phone on here and then rotate this handle and you can see that the, the table rotates there. Uh, this thing is so far working out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. It's doing a good job and uh, it's again a new a new technology that I'm just learning about so 3D scanning is not something that I have a bunch of experience in but I'm learning so uh you know the idea here is let me set this down so try and get the camera squared away here so the idea here is is that you would take a part so let's just say we're going to do that cube uh, you would set your phone in here and then rotate this and take pictures of that part from every single angle. And then using software, you would upload those images 
and then recreate uh, this in a three-dimensional software that you then could turn around and print out. So this particular surface here, we've got 200 millimeter uh, diameter table. So, you know, if I wanted to do, let's say, make knife scales, for example, I could take, you know, if I had just the scale and then rotate it, take pictures from every single angle, uh, and then recreate that in 3D software uh, and make, you know, a, th a 3D image or an STL file that then I could use to convert into an actual 3D print. So that's what I got going on. Um, it's uh, pretty technical. There's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, one of the things, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because I feel like a lot of the stuff that you see online about 3D printing, they make it seem uh, harder than what it, than than I think it is. Now maybe I'm, you know, I I've got machining experience and stuff like that coming into this, so. So when it comes to CAD and, and that sort of stuff, um, I already have kind of the basic understanding of what's going on. So, um, you know, maybe that made my uh, learning and and transition into this uh, easier. But, uh, you know, watching a lot of the videos, um, I was seeing, you know, print quality and stuff that was nowhere near uh, this good for, uh, you know, guys that, undoubtedly or at least you know act like they have a tremendous amount of experience with 3d printers um, and seeing the print quality of what they were getting i was my expectations were not very high i guess because i was thinking that it was going to be very very difficult to get really good uh, quality prints and uh, my experience has been the uh, the opposite i've i've been pretty impressed really with how easy it is to get good quality prints. I mean, if I feel like if you just use some common sense uh, and kind of understand the process of what's going on, uh, it's really not all that difficult. And, and that's awesome. I mean, it's, it's really great that this technology is one, so affordable and two, uh, relative, you know, anybody could do this. Uh, so, so that part's really cool. Uh, there are multiple different materials that you can print in uh, most commonly, and I think this is true for just about everyone, but I think most people use PLA, uh, which is polylactic acid, I think is what it is. Um, it's just a, an easy filament to print with. Uh, it's relatively cheap. It's readily available. Uh, there's certainly quality differences. That's something that I've learned immediately. Um, not all filaments are, are created equally. Uh, I found some Polaroid made uh, filament uh, at a local like craft store and they had it on sale. I don't know if it was old or what, but that stuff prints really, really well. And then I bought some other PLAs that were just some cheap stuff off of Amazon and it it's not nearly as good. Uh, so so I've already experienced that there's massive quality difference. And, you know, I've only, again, I've only had this thing like three weeks. I don't even think it's been a full three weeks yet, maybe two and a half. But but anyway, uh, just in the, the very limited experience that I have, I've noticed that there's a pretty big uh, difference in quality. And then, you know, things like the nozzle diameters and whatnot, uh, this printer shipped with brass nozzles that were 0.4 millimeter uh, no nozzle diameter. And... Uh, to do stuff like the wood filament or carbon fiber, uh, different things like that, you need uh, a little bit larger diameter hole as well as hardened steel uh, because the brass won't hold up to any sort of abrasive uh, filaments, which carbon fiber and the wood certainly is. And so I got some hardened steel nozzles. I've got 0.6 and 0.8 millimeter nozzles. Uh, so the, the actual extruded diameter um, you know, is, is slightly larger than what the, the printer shipped with, uh, which helps speed up the prints, uh, but you also suffer a little bit in print quality. Um, you know, the thinner the layer and the thinner the, the filament uh, that's coming out of the printer, the more precise you can be. Uh, and, you know, with like points and 
hard angles and stops and different things. Uh, but there truly are literally thousands of settings in here um, that that can make for a fantastic print or a terrible one. So so there's definitely a lot to learn. It's a big uh, a, a big deal. Uh, the slicer that you use and the software that you use it's 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 pretty amazing uh, how much that affects the quality of the print. Uh, so. So you can take what is a budget style printer like this Mingda D2, which you can buy these for like 230 bucks, something like that. Somewhere between 200 and 250, depending on when you find them on sale. I actually got this thing. Uh, they were had like a, a first of the or New Year's sale or something. And I found a coupon and I actually got it for under $200. But... But that's, you know, I, I don't think you're going to find that deal today. Um, I'll throw a link in the description uh, where you, you can get this exact printer from. I'm really happy with the quality of it. Uh, but like I said, if if the not having support really uh, scares you, then I think going down the path of like the Creality Ender 3, uh, that's like a whole entire system uh, that they have set up where you have, you know, there's like a whole community out there. Um, and certainly when it comes to like the park cooling fan and the shrouds and stuff like that, you can find tons and tons of stuff for the Ender 3. Uh, that's a really popular printer, and there's just tons of them out there. So I think for someone that, that maybe isn't quite as technical and is looking for something that's easier to set up, and, and there's just tons and tons of them out there, that's probably what I would go with, uh, just because it's, uh, it's going to be a bit easier. However, with that being said... For this, uh, the 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 Ender Three is right in the same price range, and the build volume is very very similar. But the Ender Three does not have a direct drive extruder. It does not have dual Z axis motors. It does not have uh, this wider base uh, for the Y axis. And so, from a quality standpoint, this printer has more potential. But you also have to fiddle with it to get that potential out of it, if that makes sense. So. So I feel like this is a better quality printer for the money. Uh, however, uh, you're going to have to do some fiddling and stuff to make it really great. And I personally don't mind doing that fiddling. To me, that's one of the ways that I learn. Um, you know, being able to to work on the thing and, and adjust all the, the pivot points and axis and, you know, all the different uh, things about it is a great way to learn how all this works. So, so that's my recommendation. I certainly do not have a tremendous amount of experience. I mean, like I said, I've had this thing like two and a half or three weeks. That's the extent of my 3D printing experience at this point. Uh, but I, you know, I think that what I've had to do to make this printer work really well, I think is probably a little bit more technical and whatnot than just what the average person would want to mess with. So if you're a real technical person and understand how these types of things work, by all means, I think this is a fantastic way to go. Um, so so I definitely give it two thumbs up. I've been really impressed with the Mingda D2. Uh, one of the things that, you know, originally when I was looking at the build volume, I thought, you know, 230 by 230 by 260, <clears throat> I'm never going to build anything larger than that. And literally within just a couple of days, <laughs> I was thinking, man, I probably should have gotten the D4. The D4 is like 400, mil 400 by 400 by, I don't even remember what the height is on it, but um, it's very, very similar machine. Uh, the one real major upgrade that the D4 has over the D2 is uh, auto bed leveling. Uh, which the bed leveling is very, very uh, critical, and you have to have that done correctly. Uh, there are some kind of hacks that you can do, like you can uh, use rafts underneath your print uh, that will... Um, basically, that kind of takes the, the uh, precision out of it. You don't have to make sure that the bed is perfectly level if you're going to use rafts. Um, I personally do not use any rafts. Um, I think it's 
to me it's just better to get the the bed perfectly level uh but that's just me uh so you know ultimately i, I really like the the printer i think it's a good printer um, I, you know, it's been reliable. I haven't had any issues with it as far as the quality is concerned. Um, you know, the, I would certainly recommend if you go and buy something like this, you need to go through and make sure every single piece of hardware is tight. Uh, I definitely had to do that, but otherwise it's been, uh, really fantastic. I, uh, you know, I, I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube about these printers before I purchased one. Um, I saw opinions on this printer that varied wildly. The ones that were, the guys were saying that uh, it was negative. I mean, these guys acted as if they had a bunch of 3D printing experience. Uh, but I would kind of question that after seeing the, the quality of prints that they were producing. Uh, I just... It was kind of shocking to me, actually, how how bad it was. I mean, now that I have one for myself, when I see uh, these other guys uh, printing these things and they show off the prints and they're talking about this, that, or the other thing, I'm I'm just kind of shocked at how poor the quality is on a lot of those uh, deals. But anyway, um, so I just wanted to put a video out there that kind of you know broke this down from a. Um, I guess, you know, full on newbie, uh, point of view. Um, I think, you know, if this is something that interests you, it's got a low entry cost. It's a ton of fun. I've really kind of nerded out on it in the last few weeks. Uh, this printer has ran a tremendous amount of hours in the last few weeks. I've literally got a box just full of a bunch of crap that I printed, uh, little test prints and all sorts of little things trying to get the settings dialed in and these little, uh, calibration cubes i mean i've made probably 20 or 30 of these things <laughs> so um you know and i think that's probably uh pretty common for people uh you know to to just start making a whole bunch of little parts as soon as you get one of these things because one it's it's just fun and enjoyable but you know i try to make it the best quality that i can uh so you know having the calibration perfect to where the square this cube comes out you know 20 mil by 20 mil uh with the letters correct uh with wood filament uh yeah i'm i'm pretty happy with it and it's just it's been a lot of fun all the way around so i certainly would recommend if if this is you know kind of up your alley and you like technical things like this or you want to to make uh different things you know this is a great way to do it and uh the the color options and stuff are pretty much endless when it comes to the different materials uh you know you can do more durable stuff than pla you know like abs or petg uh and then carbon fiber impregnated stuff and i mean the the list is just goes on and on and on so you can definitely go down a rabbit hole uh with the 3d printing and and kind of get caught up in it but I think it's uh, pretty cool and, uh, you know, with, to be able to get up and running for a couple hundred bucks. I mean, really, you can buy a printer, a few hundred bucks plus some filament and legitimately be up and printing uh, within, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your, your skill set as far as, you know, assembling the thing. And, and that's pretty remarkable. Um, so... Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool all the way around. It is time consuming, uh, so you will have time wrapped up into it, but there's a tremendous number of prints online that you can find, uh, you know, these things. Uh, so, and and not just, you know, trinket things like this that really have no oop, have no purpose other than just being a, an oddity. Uh, but I mean, you can do, you know, full on functional things that are useful. Uh, and the list goes on and on. I mean, it just, you can do anything you want. Uh, one of the things that I printed was this uh, collapsible samurai sword. Um, and the interesting thing about this is how uh, it prints all in one uh, print. And you can see how close those layers are. Uh, but then, you know, it telescopes out like an antenna. Uh, pretty cool. And, you know, the quality on this turned out really fantastic uh, the uh, telescoping parts are a little bit tight 
Uh, but I was just pumped that they actually functioned. I mean, I was expecting this to all be welded together and not function at all. So, so it's pretty impressive that how big this thing is, you know, and it printed, uh, standing up on the print surface like this. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty cool, pretty impressive. And, and there's a lot of cool things like that you can do with the 3d printer. Uh, because it builds layer by layer. It's just a really cool technology that's just a lot of fun to play with. Uh, I was really hoping that this printer was going to end during this video, but I started it a little too soon. Uh, we're at 99% here. Um, I guess I can show you the screen on this. This is going to be kind of a long video, but so you can see the screen here. Um, it is a touch screen uh, and so I started this print at 40 millimeters a second. I'm actually running it right now at 110% of that. So you can uh, raise and lower your percentage uh, as you're printing, uh, which is really cool. And then uh, you can, you know, look at the extruder uh, or fan, part cooling fan settings. Uh, you can change the heat, the, the bed heat or the uh, extruder heat. So right now, I'm running it at 205C, uh, so a little over 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and the bed temp is at 55 degrees C. Uh, <clears throat> so everything when it comes to the 3D printing world is in metric. Uh, so, you know, we're talking millimeters uh, for everything uh, from the dimension standpoint and uh, Celsius uh, for the temperature which I really like the metric system. So that's, you know, a good thing as far as I'm concerned, it's just easier to deal with and more accurate. Um, but the uh, filament, it, the standard filament is 1.75 millimeters in diameter. Uh, so when you buy a spool of filament, you get, it's just pretty insane actually how much printing you can get out of one spool. Uh, so, you know, if, if you wanted to purchase a printer like this, I would absolutely recommend buying a big spool of filament, um, like the one kilogram, I think is what they are, uh, spool. So like two and a half pounds or 2.2 pounds or something. Um, this, uh, and, and you'll be able to print for a very, very long time. Now, one of the things that will happen inevitably is, is that you'll want more colors immediately, like you know, one of the reasons why tons of the stuff that I printed uh, was green <laughs> was because I, you know, loaded a filament and then left it there and just started printing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and so I actually started with red originally and then went to green and then, and now I've gotten to the point where I'm changing colors more often and, and filament types. I have not printed any carbon fiber yet, uh, but that's something that I will do uh, very soon. And <clears throat> I also have not really started experimenting yet with like ABS. Uh, I do have some black PETG, which is one of the reasons for the glass. Um, this, these uh, flexible mats, this uh, um, magnetic flexible mat, this works extremely well uh, for the uh, PLA stuff to print on, and the wood works on this okay as well, uh, but PETG uh, sticks to this extremely hard, uh, so you pretty well ruin this when if you tried to print uh, PETG. And then the other downside to these magnetic uh, mats, you can see this deal right here. So I actually dropped this... Uh, the little spool holder and it hit the bed right there and it hit on uh, the end and dented that for good. <laughs> so in the slicer software, um, if I don't need the print, it, you know, the shitty part about it is it's, I mean, it's not dead center, but it's not far off. Um, but, you know, I try to print around it because if I print over that, you'll you know, have the, the material will go down in that little divot, um, which is just a bummer. And you guys know my channel is called OCD for EDC. So my OCD is uh, definitely kicking in and pisses me off that I did that, but it was 100% my fault. Um, speaking of OCD, got some new stickers 
uh, one of which is right here. Um, and so that's my Maker's Mark uh, logo, the OCD for EDC logo. And then a couple of sayings that have kind of got coined during our live streams. Uh, we've got uh, the 100%, which this sticker, let me see if I can peel the the uh, border off around this thing and get my fingers to work. I don't have any fingernails, so there we go. All right. <clears throat> Hopefully that shows up a little better. You can see the shiny part. But uh, so we got 100% certified poon gooch, and then uh, we got the gotta love hoot gooch. <laughs> so anyway, uh, these stickers will be available on the website here pretty soon, uh, within a few days. Uh, but uh, the hoot gooch and the poon gooch. So if you guys want to get in on on some stickers, and of course we have the the other ones as well. All the OCD. Uh, OCD for EDC stickers are available on the website ocdforedc.com and now the print just ended so I'm just going to raise that up real quick uh, one of the things that I need to work on is getting my G code uh, squared away so I started using a different slicer and because of that I don't have I, I thought that I uploaded the uh, the start code and the end code, uh, but apparently I didn't because when the thing's done printing, it'll just sit there. <laughs> so, so I need to get that taken care of. Uh, but, so what I've got here, I'm just holding this uh, glass down or this mirror down with some of these uh, style uh, paper clips. And we're going to pull this off of here. And I'll just set it up on this, uh, let me see here. I'm just going to set it, I think I will. There we go. I'm going to just bring the mirror and everything over and set it on this turntable for right now. Actually, let's do this. Because my mirror is a little bigger than my turntable. There we go. Back this up a little bit and then I'll rotate it. Um, so you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but let me get it around to where that is. So you can see the little... Uh, the little stringing right there where the print ended um, not a big deal and this printer actually came with this set of flush cutters uh, they're they're nice flush cutters they work well uh, the little tool kit that the printer came with uh, actually came with some decent uh, quality tools so these are actually uh, you know spring spring open uh, flush cutters and and they are nice I like them it also came with uh, a little uh, flexible putty knife uh, it wasn't sharpened and I have better putty knives that I use so this one I haven't even really used at all um, it's just sitting here and it came with a wrench for changing nozzles uh, so it, it, it came with a decent little tool set of course came with all the allen wrenches and stuff to to uh, assemble the printer but anyway uh, here's my my uh, little uh, flower pot that I just made you can see so far I mean just from what I can see right now I'm pretty happy with the quality on this um, it looks uh, pretty pretty great so yeah again you know for starting out and um, you know I'm not saying that uh, these are the greatest prints ever um, but for you know a couple weeks in I'm pretty happy with the results that I'm getting so anyway, guys, uh, hit me up in the comments, whatever, uh, you know, if you got any questions or anything, or if you have some advice uh, for me, if some of you guys out there are into 3D printing and uh, see something that I'm screwing up here, um, yeah, you know, let me know for sure, because I'm just learning as I go. But uh, it's been enjoyable. 
hopefully you guys enjoy this video and i will talk to you next time peace i'm out